You know, sometimes you think you got it figured out. And something comes along. After 30 years of ministry, the man asked me the other day when I was on the phone with him, talking with him, a friend of mine in Medford, Oregon. And we were talking about some things that were going on in the church and praying and weeping. Well, big boys don't cry, you know. I haven't grown up yet. Go out and play with me and you'll find out. But uh, he said, Brother Miller, when's the last time you took a sabbatical? And he said, how many years you been on the field, Brother Miller? I said, man, it's been about 30 years on the field. He says, how many times have you took a sabbatical? How many times has Sister Nancy took a sabbatical? I appreciate my sister. I forgot it earlier. Your hair looks pretty today. You too, Sister Hazel. And I told him, you know, when was my last sabbatical? 30 years ago. And Sister Nancy and I We've endeavored all these years to only do one thing. Bring the body of Christ into a place where joy and happiness abides in the heart of each and every one that calls himself a child of God. I know as a pastor, I've never meant any harm to anybody, ever. It was never an intent in my heart to hurt anyone in the body of Christ. And as pastors, we'll stand before God, not only for our own souls, but I'll stand before God for every soul that I ministered to, good and bad. Ultimate responsibility is from the throne of God. Ultimate responsibility comes from the horns of the altar. It is a place where if you're not prayed up, if you're not prepared for the journey ahead of you, no matter how prepared you are, it seems like you never feel like you're prepared enough. And you want to please everybody. And it hurts your heart when somebody's hurt or somebody's not happy. But one thing that I've endeavored to do is bind the body of Christ together. Take the word of God.
take the word of God and you'll find that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And only in him will you find a solace for your soul. What you feel right now is not of man. It's that sweet, sweet spirit that's in this place. Sometimes you want to laugh and dance. Sometimes you want to run. But in the days where you're shut in with God in a secret place and you're reaching out to Him, you find out that confusion is not of God. Confusion is not of God. Disruption is not of God. Just had an incident where the devil, in all of his scheming lies, came at the moment as he did when Elijah had run down from the mount. There was a knock on his door. Imagine how tired Elijah was after having spiritually battled with all the prophets of Baal. And then reaching out to God and God consuming the fire, the altar coming down, a consuming fire coming down, taking everything that was on the altar and the altar and the water that was around it. And it looked like rain was coming. And he outran the chariots down the hill. He comes to a place in his life where he could either stand and fight or run. Or walk away. And the knock came on his door at the most inopportune time. It came when he was, as one would say, virtue had left him. He was tired. And a messenger comes to him and says, she's going to have your head. Jezebel is going to have your head. And so he runs off. How many of you know there's only one time you're unprotected? Huh? There's only one time in the body of Christ and in your life as a child of God that your protection will be hard to find. And that's when you're running out of the will of God. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. If you want to get something done, get somebody who's busy. 
Hello? Because they find time somehow. Because they're busy about the master's business. And it's important to them. Is it important to you? To be about the master's business. Sometimes when you feel lost, and I know there's times that I've felt lost, so I guess it's just pastors who feel that way sometimes. When you feel lost, and there's a sense of despair, there's only one thing you can do. Go to the Word. Pray, seek the face of God. He walks in last Sunday night in a suit that probably cost more than I make a month with a nice little fancy doodah in his... One of them things that you put in your kerchief. Hair cut probably cost $30. I know his shoes were more expensive than I'd ever pay. He made three phone calls to me. Shows up at the church. We're getting ready for service, and he looks around, and it's just a small group of people. There were 17 of us there. And he took off running. And I called because I thought, what in the world? You make three phone calls. It was either two or three. And you find the church and I give you directions. Only to tell me that the Spirit of the Lord isn't here and not going to be here. And he told me to run. And that he hasn't been in this church for a long, long time time I'm sharing this with you for a reason because when you're tired it makes you want to run when the devil lies to you because I knew in my heart as I know right now, the Lord is here. And it was interesting how the devil will use people who call themselves Christians. You want to know why? I don't need to worry about who's out in the world. says the wolves come from among you ooh hello the wolves come from among you right now someone's probably sitting here with their head on Jesus going is it me but the wolves come from among you but what they're looking for is power what they're looking for is an audience What they're looking for is for their ego to be pampered. But when you have that issue in life, you'll never succeed in the things of God because God does not honor pride. 
And pride cometh before a, a fall, a haughty spirit before destruction. That was, to me, a slap, not in my face so much, I've heard it before, but in a, a slap in the church's face. And the enemy would like to shut the doors. But I've got news. In 1979, the doors were open. This church has faced many types of oppositions. They have had the news out here with other ministers. But I want you to know something. God has kept the doors open, and they're not going to shut on my watch. Don't feel like you're alone. If you feel like you're alone, don't feel like you're alone. How good and pleasant. This is where the contradiction of what was said comes into play. If the Holy Spirit is not here, why did you run? The Holy Spirit would have had you used to bring the Spirit in. How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell in unity. It's as the anointing that flowed down even over the beard of Aaron. If you're a brother in the body of Christ, you're there to fix or help fix what is broken. You're not here to claim in yourself and in your pride, you know something we don't. I have watched God do things that you'll never, in his whole 20 whatever years he's been alive, when he thinks he's got it figured out, all I can say is a wolf came among us, and I call him a wolf, and I'll shoot him from this pulpit today, because that's what you do to a wolf. Kill it. That you might walk away unharmed. There are people in this church that are hurting. There are people in this church facing many afflictions. There are people in this church that are, have loved ones that are in a dire place. And who's going to be there for them? That's what the body of Christ is about. Being there for your brothers. Being there for your sisters. Helping one another to understand more and more. How much we need one another. My wife couldn't have said it better. And I left my notes a few minutes ago. Like before I started preaching. But my wife said it best. One strand can be easily broken. But a three strand cord is not easily broke. When we bind together for our brothers, for our sisters, for the hurting, for the lost. When we bind together, it says where two or three agree on any one thing, it shall be done. That's the word of God. It's not my word. I don't have to defend it. I don't have to do anything but believe it and know that if it's going to happen, it's God who's going to do it. But when I stand with you and you stand with me, we are a majority. We are not a minority. The body of Christ is not a minority. We have a president who's calling out the name of God. And when he's calling out the name of God right now, every NFL man who has stood against the flag of the United States is 17.8% of Americans agree with them. Hallelujah. The rest agree with our president. Our flag stands for freedom of religion. 
and the day that the flag no longer stands for you and I who our ancestors came into this land and on God we stand and it's going to be God who's going to be that which we stand on. It wasn't Plymouth Rock. It was God the rock that they came onto this land. And it was based on Christianity and the first education of this world was the Bible. Thomas Jefferson used to ride his horse to the White House and they would have church, Christian church, Bible-believing, Holy Ghost thumpers in that place we call the White House. Somewhere along the line, men have made that White House a little bit dimmer. And when there's one who comes along and says, it's no longer dim, it's time to be bright. It's time to be standing up for who the world should know has the strength and the ability to move forward. Let me tell you something. It's time for us to bring back the white in the house. Abraham Lincoln Can you imagine how much suffering he faced? And in the suffering of a man who brought unity to our country unity to all Americans he was assassinated because a minority did not want to hear about the truth. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We hold a banner, each and every one of us. Yes, I'm American. Yes, I believe in every star that spangles on our banner. But I want you to know something. There's two flags back here that I wave. And one I wave strongly. And that's the banner of Jehovah God. He is the banner over me. He's the provider. He's the healer. And he goes before us in battle. When we turn to run, God did not give us anything for our back. But when we run in the necessity, God is our rearward. He's the one covering us from behind. Ain't no grave going to hold this body down. It may hold Buddha. It may hold Hare Krishna. And it does hold Allah and uh, whoever else they want to believe in. Taliban. Zealots who walk in death and destruction rather than life and liberty. They're still in the ground. They think they got 72 virgins. Honey, I had enough trouble with just one wife. Hello? If they think they got problems now, let me tell you something. It don't sound like heaven to me. But it just tells you how depraved Muslims are. 
when they're zealots. They don't know God, never will know God, because they don't know the Word, and they don't know life. They live in destruction and despair. And that's why we serve God, to take life to those who are not living. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to give up. But I will rise up. I will bring up. I will hold up. And I will stand up for the body of Christ in the word of God. But ain't nobody going to hold this body down because the grave cannot hold me because it could not hold Jesus. He said, I go to prepare a place where I am. Ye may be also. He told me in a promise that heaven is mine to gain and that hell is mine to shun. And to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We don't like, we like the words, and it's easy to say when you're not facing it. But I guarantee you, after 30 years, I hurt with those who hurt. And sometimes I'm strong for those who hurt, but when I go home, I cry when they cry. You see, the soldiers in the army of God have their trials too and their tribulations. But it says that we're much more precious than even silver and fine gold to God. A peculiar people. That's who we are, a peculiar people. That doesn't mean that we're strange. That doesn't mean that we're odd. What that means is a peculiar people, the word peculiar in the Greek means a treasure. We are treasured of God. We are a treasure that others don't know yet but when we stand for God do we really understand that there's going to be trials and tribulations that come our way I shared many with closing here I'm going to close with this when I first began my endeavors as a Christian Never broke a bone in my body except for my nose. And you guys out there can probably figure out how that happened. Being as short as I am, you have to get inside to fight. But I want you to know that never broke a bone. Never had a major illness. But I wasn't saved a month, and I broke a leg. When I first started the church in Nampa, it wasn't, but our first Easter weekend, I was lamb-blasted by a lady who for some reason decided in that whole line of people a mile long that my red truck was the one to hit. Bless her heart, they had to cut her out of her car. People told me, said, sewer. I said, no. How could I? take everything she owns when her and her husband had worked so long and she was in her 80s and they had worked their whole life and then when they she passes the children sit around here well yeah everything that they had 
is going to go to this young man and the legacy and the things that they had worked so hard for he took it all I couldn't do that but I know this when they said I had cancer I had a choice succumb or do something about it and pray but I want you to know something there's not a time goes by that I don't wonder is it going to appear again and you want to know who's telling me all these things it's not God it's not even the word of God I use myself because then I'm not you can't say I was you know but my trials are nothing to what other Christians are going through. That's why I pastor. That's why when people leave without letting us know why, when they leave only to call a few years later and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. They're forgiven. But it wasn't me. It wasn't my wife, though we are hurt. That was hurt. It's the body of Christ. How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell in unity. When Sister Anne comes up to me, and encourages me and she has oxygen that she has to use right now but she comes up to me and she says brother Miller and she encourages me when I should be encouraging her this is the body of Christ working together we need one another we're better together and the body of Christ is only as weak as its weakest link this is why we teach the scripture this is why we stand with our brothers and sisters this is why we walk by faith and not by sight because if I walk by sight I would be in despair every day. But it's the light of God in a world that's full of darkness that shines in the heart of God's people, giving one another the strength to carry on. He's worthy. Stand with me. Worthy.
are Jesus, yes you are Lord, Jesus, if you are here this morning and you need to pray and you need help in any circumstance or situation, that's what you're here for, to share Jesus said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And when you bring it to the body of Christ, when you bring it to the altar, we agree together. We share with our brothers and our sisters in fighting the battles that need to be fought. But we cast all our care upon Him, for He careth for us. O King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship You, Heavenly Father. At this time, You're doing things we cannot see and the future is bright we hold on to the banner that's laid before us that we might see that the journey that's ahead is a journey of victory a journey of peace a journey of love and a journey that will hold us together because that journey is the way. And Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And our life is hid in Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Shake hands, hug a neck, tell somebody you enjoyed service. I forgot to mention a couple things, really important things. Um, it, today is Kathy's birthday. She's 60. So we wanted to sing happy birthday to her. And I do uh -oh. have a, a cake back there if anybody wants to stay. And then also You got to at least your, stay and read it. <laughs> and then I have your uh, tithe reports, your records uh, for your taxes. If you want those today, um, you can, I will give those to you today. I have those ready. So let's sing happy birthday real quick. Happy birthday to Kathy. on you. God's blessings on you. God's blessings. God's blessings. God's blessings on you. And then we do have choir practice too. Oh, we have choir. Can I be in the choir this time? <laughs>